Welcome to Italics, television for the Italian American experience. I'm your host, Anthony Tamburri. March is Women's History Month, and March 8th is universally observed as International Women's History Day. March is the month in which we observe and honor the myriad contributions that women have made to virtually every level of our world. To honor Women's History Month, this episode of Italics is dedicated to the work of filmmaker Nancy Savoca. Nancy, welcome again to Italics. Thank you. I'm so happy to be back. It's great to have you. So let's start with something really timely, the Me Too movement uh -huh. and Hollywood. Mm. Um, well, hashtag Me Too is a big issue. And for me, it's almost the challenge is to unpack it. Uh, because I've been watching it. I've been talking about it with my friends. I've been talking about it within my work. I mean, in the DGA, we're talking about anti-sexual harassment policies. Um, and so for me, it's really important um, to first, you know, there, there's a lot of emotion attached to this. There's a lot of feelings of injustice with our, which are totally justified. Um, and then there's these complications of, of things that we need to unpack. Um, so for me, the hashtag Me Too, first of all, we, I like to think about the origins of that movement was uh, Tarana Burke, who was mm -hmm. a civil rights activist from the Bronx. And she started the hashtag Me Too movement in 2006. So it's been around for a while. And it's interesting to me that um, when my industry uh, ex exploded with it, that's when the big global awareness came about, which shows you how powerful the film industry yeah. is. I so appreciate the actresses that came out uh, so courageously and told their stories because this could have easily fallen flat on its face and they'd be all be out of work and nothing would have happened. Uh, they did not know what would happen when they came out to tell their stories. So we have to really appreciate that. Um, we also have to really appreciate that there are so many other stories that are not from actresses that are just women right. who are hotel workers and factory workers and those are the women who are even less empowered. And we'll get to it one of yes. your film deals. Yes, with because that. we yes. talk about that. Exactly. One These of your are all deals with that. to me, hashtag me too, when I separate it all into its pieces, it's all the <laughs> things I'm really interested about. And my my movies are about in some way or another. So to me, hashtag me too is one of the components of this huge human imbalance we have of power. Um, and it involves gender and it involves race and it involves social classes. And all of these things need to be addressed piece by piece. And everyone that is a part of these issues of injustice mm -hmm. have problems from minor inconveniences to rape, murder, and other things. Yeah. That's the range of it. Yeah. So we need to sort of separate all these pieces out. You know, part of it is that these are legal issues that need to be, uh, you know, identified and made sure that people who have committed crimes um, are brought to justice and people who have not committed crimes are, you know, th that ha we try to not to uh, ruin lives by mm -hmm. that. I know there's a lot of issues about hashtag me too. We have the, the people have come out and then you have the pushback, right. especially from women, I think of the 60s generation who feel like they fought so hard for women's rights and then is this like victimizing women in some way? Um, I don't happen to agree with that, but I can understand that mm -hmm. as being an issue. But I do think that in the end, we still have, the thing we need to hold on to is this power imbalance that just knocks everybody, including the people in power, knocks them out of balance. It doesn't benefit anybody. But yeah, it's curious that this was um, and still is being sort of pushed by a young, a young, under thirty male reporter, Rowan. Yeah. 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 yeah, 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 and I think it's a good sign. Yeah. I like it, you yeah. know, because yeah. it shows that there's this younger generation that is looking to things, and that they're being they're they're able. In this case, a man was able to cross over that border of gender, let's say, and and deal with these issues that all these women have. That's have suffered, I think that's where know? the answer lies. Yeah. with the, with the folks that whether they want to or not benefit from a system, as a light skinned person who is identified by other people as a white person, I benefit from a racist system. Yeah. I'm not comfortable with it, yeah. so I need to keep talking about it. Yeah. So all the men who are benefiting from the system who are just not comfortable with the fact that their benefit is somebody else's detriment mm -hmm. need to 
keep talking about it. So yeah. I say we bring everyone to the table yeah. on that one. Yeah. yeah, and we don't have to get into this because yeah. it's their story, but a couple of your actresses have also yes. come out, spoken about Yes, theirs. I've written letters of support to yeah. them. It's like, yeah. I think they're incredibly courageous because like I said, this could have gone so many different yeah. ways. And when you're, when you're having a state, making a statement like that so public that reaches around the world, mm -hmm. you don't know what the result is going to yeah. be. But you know that an injustice was done and you want it to put it out there because without those stories, not, we wouldn't be where we are right now mm -hmm. talking so much about this. Yeah. You've done over a dozen movies. You've won numerous awards at festival for best film, for best direction, for best screenplay, etc. Were you like 15? You woke up and said, "I want to be a filmmaker." <laughs> <laughs> no, all kidding aside, what yeah, was your yeah. inspiration in all of this, um, and how did you get started? You know, my inspiration was my family. Uh -huh. My inspiration was my family because my parents came to the states when my mom was pregnant with me, so I'm the firstborn American in my family, and uh, movies and music are like two art forms that are so, they transcend language. Even films in English transcend language. Mm -hmm. You can watch a movie in any language and get what's going yeah. on. Uh, music is the same thing. So I think those two art forms were so much a part of my growing up that my parents were movie lovers. My brother and I used to play making movies. I think before I can remember having a lot of words for it, we used to get Jiffy peanut butter cans and the, the cans were shiny Mm -hmm. on the inside, the, the covers, and we would set up movie lights, and we would do takes. We have something, like we'd watch something on TV and then run and reenact it and do takes of it. And then we'd make up our own stuff, like, you know, people, <laughs> damsel in distress, and then I'd be like a guy actor, because my brother <laughs> wanted a brother, so I would do like the guy role too. Uh -huh. But yeah, yeah, yeah. So it was fun, I mean, it was always play for me. What I never ever thought would happen was that I'd actually do this as a life calling. Mm -hmm. That, that that shocked me and scared the hell out of yeah. me. Yeah, and you went to film school. I did, I yeah. I, well I was at Queens College okay. for two years and there was a film program there and I took some courses there and then uh, when I met my husband Richard Gay and I very boldly, I very boldly <laughs> told him on our first meeting, um, our first encounter I said I'm gonna make movies, I was 18 and um, he didn't laugh at me and I married him because of that. <laughs> <laughs> and you're still married, and, still he, and, married. and you both work together. <laughs> and we work together, and then I kidnapped yes. him. <laughs> and then I kidnapped him, I said, you gotta work with me. Yeah, um, <clears throat> yeah uh, he, Rich was the one who said, you know, NYU is a really good school for film, and I said, I know, but I can't afford it. And he goes, it's called a student loan. And back in the day, yeah. you could do it, and you took ten, 10 years to pay it back, and yeah. we did. Yeah. Um, I worry about young people today not being able to afford that. It's people who have stories to tell that yeah. can't afford it. So we always look for ways to support people that may not be able to have all the resources mm -hmm. to tell their stories because they make great storytellers. Yeah, you know? yeah. Especially no, people, it is people who struggle. It's frightening today with the loans that students have coming oh. out. And they oh, and, they, and then you and then you graduate and you're like a filmmaker. Yes. And you're a filmmaker right. and you're not going to make any money. <laughs> exactly. I made the two biggest commitments of my life within a week of each other. Um, I got married when I was 20, and a week later, I went to NYU for the summer film <laughs> course. So poor Rich, I mean, poor me, I didn't know what I was getting into, but poor Rich, he married somebody, he didn't know what was gonna happen to me. I completely became immersed in the six-week program at NYU, and um, I couldn't come up for air. And we had just gotten married, and he, couldn't see me so he started <laughs> showing up on set and started helping me out and he became like just he we didn't even have a name for it it's like I knew I had to make these films and yeah. he just did whatever anything that I couldn't do he did and so just uh, out of a desire to be together we started working together mm -hmm. and I feel I feel incredibly lucky that he felt that way Good. Yeah, that's great. That's yeah. wonderful. Yeah. So before we get to a couple of films I want to mm -hmm. talk about, you made a few shorts, obviously, yeah. during that period. Do you look back at those occasionally and, and think, hmm? <laughs> oh, you know, I, don't, I can't look at anything yeah. I've done. I always think, like, I, can I get back in the editing room and, or recut? Yeah. Or can I have a reshoot? Or, you know, can I bring those actors back, like, 20 years later? And can we redo? <laughs> um, no, they actually, I've been very lucky to work with amazing actors. Yeah. Um, no, there's always, you know, 
I think you look at them and say, that's, where I, that's who I was then and that's where mm -hmm. I was then. And yeah. um, it's valid in its time. Yeah. yeah. Speaking of actors, you've worked with a number of major actors, yeah. but one's no longer with us. It was really horrible. River Phoenix, yeah. big dog fight, and, yeah. which is a great movie, and he yeah. was great in that. And oh. what a, it was just a loss to the, I mean, there's a human loss, yeah, obviously, yeah. first and foremost, yeah. but a loss to the industry, I think. A big loss to the yeah. industry. When I worked with River, he was 19 years old, and he was so much more mature than I was, and he was so much more experienced than I was, because that was my second film, but it was my first studio film, and River had been in the industry forever. He was yeah. a child actor. Mm -hmm. So he gave me a lot of advice <coughs> and he helped me a lot. And he would also sometimes tell me what to do, which, <laughs> and I would say, River, when are you going to direct, you yeah. know? And he, and he was planning to. Yeah. He wanted yeah. to. Yeah. So let's get to some of your films, True Love, Household Saints, Dirt, and Union Square. Ah. And all of them deal with gender and ethnicity. And that seems to be, those seem to be the two topics that sort of identify, if we had to, if we had to identify Nancy Savoca, <laughs> I would say gender and ethnicity. <laughs> Maybe ethnicity yeah. and gender, I'm not sure which one. <laughs> yeah, but no, yeah. but all yeah. kidding aside, gender yeah. and ethnicity, yeah. I think are the ones that, the, the two themes that really underscore. Yeah. Um, your films and yeah. True Love for me is really an important movie for this reason. One, uh, it deals with gender mm. up front because it's from the perspective of the young woman getting married and the film is about preparation of a wedding. Yeah. And two, it's about working class outside Manhattan, mm. Italian Americans from New York. And there's a third aspect and that is there is absolutely no reference to organized crime. Now mm. we, we're not those yeah. who, you mm -hmm. know, beat that yeah. to death, yeah. But, yeah. But, but it is problematic. Yeah. I mean, everyone uh, understands right. that that's problematic. Right. And for me, true love for those three reasons. And then it's uh. just a great movie. One hour, I go up for one hour, one hour. It's our wedding night! So what do you want for my life, huh? Those are really first primary roles for both actors, yeah, right? For yeah, both yeah. Annabella Shore and yeah, Michael Eldard, yeah. right? I think Annabella had been on a television movie yeah. with Sophia Loren, right? With um, uh, the, for, uh, the Fortunate Pilgrim, the Fortunate Pilgrim, right? But so this first, was our first, first feature yeah. film, and yeah. and Ron Eldar too. Yeah. 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 Oh, that cast was incredible. That that entire mm -hmm. cast, I I felt uh, like every everyone that came up in front of the camera, I just felt like. I was just the front on the front row of an amazing show. Like yeah. I, I felt incredibly lucky. Yeah. Incredible. Not that it wasn't difficult. Not that we didn't have our days. Yeah. But but at the heart of it, in those moments when the camera was rolling and people were acting, I just felt incredibly lucky. Mm -hmm. to that be was there. your first feature. That was as my well. first feature. Yeah. 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 The whole experience is, and I was <laughs> pregnant, and nobody knew. <laughs> So it was like all kinds yeah. of things going on. It was incredible. It was incredible yeah. time. And then you followed up with Dogfight. Yeah. The only thing I knew is that I was determined not to do something that was connected to the first film. And that was very diff proved to be very difficult. I was offered every screenplay that had to do with teenage girls and Italian girls mm -hmm. and Jersey girls and, you know, Brooklyn girls. And, and I, I just really wanted to do something different and dogfight reminded actually was still personal reminded me of my sisters because they grew up in the early 60s and I watched mm -hmm. I was a kid but I was watching yeah them. so they were the teenagers of the early 60s mm -hmm. um, yeah. and I, it felt very familiar to me that make story. things up to you if this is some part of your dogfight I'll kill you and they dealt with the social issues of the, the 60s that very much, you know and then yeah. Um, yeah. Th there's the issue also about the Vietnam War yeah, which yeah. we grew up, I mean, yeah. it, was, it was around us, yeah. it was in my neighborhood, all the boys went, all the boys in my neighborhood went. Within film criticism, I guess we sort of talk about the Vietnam War genre, we do and we don't, and mm. I always find it curious that we do and we don't, because there's another film that I thought is sort of a classic, and it's by an Italian American, and for Vietnam War, uh -huh. and it's Chimino's um, oh, Deer, Deer Hunter. Hunter. Deer Hunter, yeah. oh yes, yeah. oh my God. Yeah, yes. which is also, yes. you know, that whole genre of yes. Yes. what goes on. What happens, what, what you carry with you. Yeah. What you carry with yeah. you. The films, you say, nah, I don't want to deal with that anymore. Uh -huh. did, did, were did they some get of made? Those, yeah, were they made, do you think? Were they made, do you remember? I uh, think some were yeah. made, some instantly forgettable yeah. is what yeah, it's called. Yeah, 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 okay. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> and, no, and then there were some wonderful films that, that, um, that are, were made, so, yeah. 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 yeah, and just were not for me. I wasn't yeah, the right director for it. Yeah, sure. But um, yeah, some of them were just like, you know, they, I was right <clears throat> in saying no, and some mm -hmm. were wonderful, and I was yeah. like, I don't regret it because I'm like, oh boy, I wouldn't have made it that you way. You wouldn't have made the other you know? ones, exactly. That wasn't me. Yeah. So, yeah. And then, of course, Household Saints, which is one of my oh, favorites. I love that. 
I love that book yeah. so much. I love Francine Prose so much. She's an incredible writer. Yeah. She's an incredible storyteller. I was so lucky. And that story, I don't know if I ever told you, that was, I was working at a um, production office and I was a reader. Mm -hmm. So I got to read, you know, go through the New York Times book review and just pick out novels that could be good movies. This was when I was in college and I read Household Saints. And I wrote like 10 pages on why that would make a great movie. <laughs> and then I handed it in to these filmmakers. I had nothing. They were like, oh, but this is an art kind of movie. I'm like, and I realized it was my kind of movie. Yeah. And I held on to them. After Dogfight, the first thing we did, Rich and I, is we, we ran up to see Francine Prose in her house up upstate New York. Yeah. And we're like, we love you. Here's what we could do. We want to make this movie. And she, she said yes. Your cook and Ma, we got company coming for supper. It's great rich movie. material. It was like yeah. so, great like giving too. a delicious dinner to eat. Yeah. It was like so good. Yeah. It was so much fun working with that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. great cast. Vincent D'Onofrio, Lily okay. Taylor, Judith Molina, Tracy uh, Ullman. Ullman. Yeah, Rachel yeah. Bella, who played the little girl. Yeah, she was incredible. Why are you punishing us like this? And the whole generational Wait, aspects you of much you know, what did you have family, today? non family, you know, yes. the in law, uh, the yeah. daughter in law. So many stories. And yeah. I said to Francine, and Francine, you're Jewish. How do you know that? She goes, Well, it's all the same. Yeah. It's all the same. <laughs> and that's actually that's a really important point I'd love to make. Yeah. Because about true love, about Francine <laughs> and household saints, um, sometimes the more specific we are ethnically, the more universal the story gets. It's like this paradox. Yeah. I don't know why it happens, but the more, which is why I love dealing with ethnicity and tribalism mm -hmm. and things like that, because the more I get into that, I feel like the more I reach out into the world in some way. Yeah. I don't know how that works, but no, it but, works but that way. No, but it's true, you know, yeah. I mean, for, for her to say, well, it's, it's all the same thing, it right? Is. You're Jewish. How can you understand that? Well, it's all the same it thing. Is. It is true. There are certain, and whether it's the Mediterranean aspect, the, yeah. you know, the foundation of both cultures, whatever it is, yeah. you know, um, it's true. You can just pull out the Italian name, stick in the Jewish <laughs> name, or vice versa. <laughs> absolutely, right? yeah. absolutely. Yeah. yeah. But you deal, though, with all those superstitions and stuff in Household Saints that yeah. is Grew just, up with them. you know, yeah. <laughs> yeah. That is just Still wonderful. And there are some <laughs> wonderful scenes <laughs> yeah. in Household Saints the, the late Stop night cooking the sausage. Things. And yeah. who's cooking the sausage, mm. right? It's like, it's a Carmela, it's a Teresa. Yeah. And yeah. it's wonderful the way you play with that. I just oh. think it's wonderful because yeah. they both have the same gown on. And the granddaughter and the grandmother having this connection when the grandmother just yeah. didn't even exist for the yeah. granddaughter. Yeah. But uh, to me, that's symbolic of what happens with us is that mm. where I was way more interested in my parents' background, my mom upheld her, her, her customs and mm -hmm. her, her culture. My dad was like, like really, like almost brutal yeah. in the way he kind of didn't want to deal mm. with the past. Mm. I dragged them to Sicily. Mm. I dragged them to yeah. the town where he was born, when he where he left as a baby. He didn't want to go. Mm. He didn't want to go. And I finally I lied to him. I said, I'm not going. If you're not going, I can't go. And you ruined my vacation. <laughs> <laughs> I totally <laughs> guilt tripped them, yeah. and it worked. It yeah. was just like fine. <laughs> yeah, your family went from, or your dad at least, went from Italy to Argentina yes. to the United States. So yeah. you have a... He did the a, triangle. So he, yeah. he had a double hyphen there. Oh, he is. I, I yeah. call him an immigrant twice removed. Yeah. It's interesting, and I, I think I also, you know, they, they say it, it does, it, it's, it becomes a part of you and your experience, this kind of like this, got to cut it got to cut it and leave like when you know when whenever I move from one I'm going to be moving soon people say oh, aren't you going to miss your all house I'm like no yeah moving on next really <laughs> you know um I'm, I'm more connected to people but locations and places I can be anywhere mm -hmm. I should make a plug here for for us mm -hmm. and that is that um the there's a wonderful analysis of that scene in an essay by our, one of our friends in Rome. The essay is by Sabrina Vellucci, oh, whom, yes, whom you yes, know, and yes. yeah, oh, yeah. So, so and it's a wonderful essay on both Household Saints and Dirt. Mm -hmm. Dirt is, is a showtime. showtime production, right? Yeah. 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 So, yeah. Uh, so they own it. Is it available online? In other no. words, if you we say this to European filmmakers or students when we go over there, it's like they're like, oh, so this movie and you own your movies. I was like, we don't own our movies. Yeah, that's, the well, that's the a real system. fallacy that people. Don't we do not own our movies. Right. The minute you get, you know, you, you get an okay and you get paid <clears throat> for your project, yeah. you're literally handing it over. Yeah. So you complete it. You do the work, but the, the label is, you know, it's mm -hmm. 
that's their ownership. And dirt, we should say, is so timely today. Yes. Yeah, sadly. Whether it's in the United States, whether it's in Western Europe, dirt is so timely today. Dirt was shown in international festivals, yeah. and it, it, it was amazing to, he to be there for the audience reactions afterwards. I was in Spain, uh, we were in the festival in Malaga, and um, this one, a uh, Spanish guy stood up and, and he said, you know, this is an important film because in our country, in Spain, we're having so many issues with immigrants, yet we have been immigrants before. Yeah. He says, I used to work in Germany in the 60s, and now when immigrants come to us, we need to remember what it was like to be an immigrant. Yeah. And I think that's a really good thing, is remember what it was like to be an immigrant. Yes as the new immigrants right. come in. Right, and there's, there's one of our paisani who's no longer with us, a painter, Ralph Fazanella. Ah, yeah. And on so many of his paintings, he would put, lest we forget. Yeah. You know, lest Absolutely. we forget, it's so Absolutely. true. Absolutely, We can't and, run in and shut the door. No. And there's this seemingly insignificant scene, <laughs> but for me it's so poignant, Inder, where the immigration officer turns to her and says something to the effect that, oh, so, so it seems to me you want to work here, so it seems to me you want to work here, because he keeps asking, are you going to work here, are you going to work here? Mm -hmm. Of course, she's supposed to say no, mm -hmm. and, mm -hmm. and, he, and he just sort of shines her on, yeah. you know, and it's really, yeah. And, and when you think about today, whether it's DACA, whether it's just the immigration policy, in general, these bans against the seven countries or whatever they are, and so on and so forth, dirt just seems to me to be so, so, so timely today. Yes. I'm yeah. really sorry that it is because it was made in 2002, mm -hmm. and it's and I was hoping that, you know and then when it didn't get shown, I'm like oh well, but the problem might get solved. Yeah. <laughs> and no, it's worse. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. So then you return l later to 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 Italy again. <laughs> 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 to Italy, New York, back to us. Union yeah. Square. Yeah, yeah. yeah. you yeah. return to the Italians yes. again. Yes, Can't get away from them. Can't get them. away from them. Can't get away from them. Well, it's funny because, you know, I, I do feel like um, I, I am very equally both. I grew up in, um, in uh, Latino and black neighborhoods, mm -hmm. early part of my childhood, and then we moved to the Italian neighborhood. So I feel, and my family, my extended family in the States was always the, the Sicilian American immigrant family that half of them went back to Sicily. Mm. You know, I have family that just went back. Yeah. Um, cousins and, and aunts and uncles. Um, but then, and then there's my Argentine family, which is different from my New York Latino family uh, friends because they're Caribbeans. So it's a little different than South America, South, yeah. South American. So I really feel part of, that's why ethnicity is so important to me because yeah. these identities are just, I have so many of them. But um, when I have one, I'm really enjoying that one. And then I go over and, you know, I feel like, yeah. like I, I can inhabit many of them and I, I feel okay about that. But it's interesting, people can't handle it. So people look at me and say, you're this or yeah. you're that. Yeah. And I'm like, hey, I'm so many things. Well, that's, you know, and that a whole issue of identity, uh, yeah. some of us have been dealing with in our writings and stuff. And, uh, you know, what does it mean to be Italian? What does it mean to be Italian-American? Yeah. And so on and so forth, yeah. you know. Which is so different from being Italian yes. to be Italian-American. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And 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 our colleague, Joseph Shore, and uh, a friend of uh, ours, his co-editor, they put together a couple of books on post-World War II immigration, and, oh, and yeah. they deal with the issue of, quote unquote, real Italians, because we've all heard that, right? Uh, yes, those of yes. us who were born in the yes. States were Italian-Americans. Those who came over, they were, quote unquote, real the Italians, real Ita especially yeah. if they're college educated. <laughs> oh, right. <laughs> right, which is, right. There's so many things that people, the, this yeah. is what's so important about our education and understanding that so many people who come over here are from a certain segment yeah. of Italy, there's a certain meaning of it, and then there's people who are gonna come from the North, that yeah. are, the, you know, it's such a, and then the difference between an immigrant and expat. Right. That's always fascinating yes. to me. Who gets to be an expat? Right. <laughs> exactly. You know? It's, exactly. Mm, it has to do with like money that, and, exactly. and money and color. Yeah. Money and color gets you right. expat afford, status. Who can afford to and who can't yes. afford to, right? Yeah. 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 And, but for identity, it's wonderful with Union Square because there are these two sisters who are really <laughs> on the antipods, right? One is <laughs> at one end of the spectrum and the other is the other end. One yeah. is this real okay. sort of ooh, right. Italian American jingling, yeah. jewelry yeah. jingling and stuff. Yeah. And then the other is uh, this straight, stiff back, right? Yeah. It's poignant and it's also funny. You do wonderful comedy there. Oh, it's thanks. great the way Thank these important you. things are filtered through comedy. When it's know? really yeah. painful, it's yeah. really good to go to comedy. Yeah. And you have a great you can actor. Do more. <laughs> One's over to see the Patty Lapone. Oh, great. Patty yeah. Lapone. But I wanted to get back right. Yeah. You have Mira yeah. Sorvino. Mira Sorvino right. and Tammy Blanchard, who took yes. those roles and just went to town with them. Yeah. It was amazing. She's an orphan. 
our rehearsals were all talking about family. That's all we did was talk yeah. about our families. Yeah. <laughs> That's pretty much the rehearsal process. We yeah. just sat around and ate and talked about our families. And of course, Mira Servino comes from Italian American yes, family, of course. her father, Paul Servino, yes, yes. and so on and so forth. But yes. she also, to get back to mm -hmm. what we started, how we started our conversation, she also came out with the Me Too movement and yes. Um, yes. put it all on the line. Yes. It's so yeah. important, I think, for people to know that, that this problem is so pervasive, that it's in every industry. And even these women that are, are goddesses, that, are, that seem so powerful, at one point are, were so vulnerable. And it's, I really, I, I, I feel like when we focus on the fact that we have to be careful about not making women victims, I think I want to refocus on the fact that there's just this, when you have hierarchy and power s systems that allow people to abuse their power, and, and that we're all complicit in being quiet about it. Um, that, that's what, I, I want to focus on that way yeah. more than I want to focus on who's a victim and who's not. Right. I, I think all of these women are, are super powerful women. Yeah. And I think all the women that are the hotel workers and the factory okay. workers are super powerful women. But I think we need to support them with a system that, that works for everyone. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That, that's what we all have to come up to that yeah. point. Um, and, and then we won't have to be talking about who's a victim. Right. You know? And the more we talk about it, the more that people can come to the table without feeling like, you know, did I do something wrong 20 years ago, yeah. you know, at that part? Like, you know, there, there's a lot of that kind of talk, talk that we need to sort of, you know, just look at, there's a structure that allows a lot of things to happen. So that's really what we should all focus mm -hmm. on. And then, and then, of course, you know, there's serious things that have happened and that needs to be taken care of. But all of us, in the center of it, need to focus on this big structure that is asking for change. I think on a big level, we are all asking for change. And it'll be to the benefit of everybody. What happens? I want to thank you for spending some oh, time with us. Thank okay. you for having me. Thank you for watching this episode of Italics. I'm your host, Anthony Tamburri. Arrivederci alla prossima puntata. Mm -hmm.